Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the council meeting of the April 8th, 2024. Uh, thank you, Councillor Donaldson, for doing the territorial acknowledgement earlier this evening. Um, you've got before you uh, an agenda. We have the addition of the um, uh, late-breaking supplementary agenda uh, in the form of the, the PINKS notation, so we'll add that to um, correspondence. Um, actually, we'll add uh, the first item to new business and the second item to the correspondence for action. With that, I'll take a motion to approve the amended agenda. Motion to approve. Moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by Councillor F. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, there's no presentations. We have some time for public participation. If you wish to speak at the mic, you're welcome to. State your name and your road, and you have four minutes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bev Bacon, I'm a chosen sheep farmer who's aware of the wildlife conflict. And I just wanted to, I sent this to you just tonight by email. But this is why you can't fence a cougar out. It shows the cougar, a cougar can jump 15 feet up from a standstill and with a running jump can jump 40 feet, broad jump. You're not keeping them out with fencing. And a bear will respect some electric fence, a string of electric fence. A bear will crash, crash through fences and press fence, fences down, but will respect re, uh, electric fence. But the cougar, you're not keeping out with fencing, any kind of fencing, they jump. Um, but I do, I have lost a ewe to a uh, bear. Conservation officer did not come, did not come, did not come, and they missed getting. You gotta get the right bear. So both the cougar and the bear eat a little bit and then hide it and come back the next day and eat some more. And that's when, the, within 24 hours, you've got to get the conservation officer or somebody, doesn't have to be him, to put a, a live trap out by the kill. And then you'll get the right cougar or the right bear. Otherwise, we might be killing cougar or bear that, that are innocent. And I do think we have to eliminate the ones that are killing domestic animals because the next will be pets and small children um, that are at risk. But um, when my ewe was killed by a bear and nobody came, it just seemed so obvious to me. I think our live trap comes from somewhere else like Souk and we need to have our own live, uh, live pen or live trap here in Machosan. And at the time, I talked to John Buchanan, and he said he would store it on his property. I think it's on wheels and can be dragged over quickly. And, uh, and then what you do is you, you put a trail camera on it, and then there's an alert as soon as you've caught the, the, the animal. But he's coming back, and that's when you get him, and our conservation officers aren't coming quickly enough. So that is the number one recommendation. Um, and um, dogs really do work. A, a, my friend's Yorkshire Terrier chased away a bear. A, a, a pot-bellied pig chased away a bear. <laughs> you know, you, they will run. If, if they're chased, they will run because they're used to prey that doesn't fight back. They're not used to prey that makes a lot of noise and a lot of fuss and runs at them. Sheep don't do that, deer don't do that. A cougar has to kill one deer a week. And if he's not getting enough deer, and we may be down in deer this year, yeah. um, I believe we are, then he's got to look for something else to eat, and we just can't make it so easy for them. But um, the, the, um, the guardian dogs are really good, but we've got something wrong with our land use planning because the people who came before us thought it was really great to have some farms and then some small lots next to the farms and then a farm area and then some small lots and they thought that was good planning. But you know what? The people from the city that buy their little plot like that are in their yard all the time and they don't like barking dogs. So if it was farm next to farm, we'd be used to these dogs bark, these dogs bark, no predators come around. So on my farm where I have guardian dogs, 
We don't have a problem with, with cougar or bear. We've chased off one bear and we've chased off three cougars, my dogs and I, me banging a shovel on the metal gates and things like that. They, the cougar especially are shy of people. I'm not worried about chasing them away and I'm, I'm proud of what my dogs can do, but my neighbors don't like the fact that I have barking dogs. It's for land use planning. Um, so I'm not s convinced that smaller lots between the farms is a good idea, um, unless they know that what comes with a farm. And we have to provide in our land use planning, I'm looking at you, land use guy, <laughs> that, that we have to provide for the wildlife corridor. So our forested mountains should be for the wildlife corridor, and, our, and our, the forest along our creek beds should be wildlife corridor and give them space and they don't want to be in our yards and so we need to protect those areas and we need to fix our OCP. What's wrong with our OCP, as good as it is in many ways, it does not provide for large acreages. If at build out, Machosen could be all five and ten acre lots, nothing bigger. At least in the highlands they have 30 acre lots, 50 acre lots. We haven't provided for that and you can't wait until somebody wants to subdivide their land and then you say, oh, wait a minute. We, we don't really want that. We have to say right now, we don't want my chosen chopped up in five and 10 acre lots. We have to have some large parcels. So up zoning, 20 seconds left. up zoning has to happen right away. I think I've said it all. We want to live in harmony with the large carnivals. We don't want to be killing them. I studied cougars with a friend of mine who, who, track, who lived in the woods and studied and tracked them. And I was with her treating them, tranquilizing them, putting radio collars on them and all that. I love cougars and I don't want them killed, but I want to keep my sheep alive too. Thank you. Please look at your email for, for this. It's, it's impressive. It's not me. <coughs> Uh, Brent Donaldson, Chalister Court. Uh, I didn't plan on speaking because I have spoken at the Ag Committee meeting uh, a couple of weeks back and as well as MIAS. Actually, it was quite a robust uh, time at MIAS. We spoke for probably 45 minutes. I do agree with several points that, uh, that Bacon made. It's interesting enough, uh, when she lost a U at her place, if memory serves me correct, that was a couple of years ago, uh, we had a kill the night before. And I do recall if uh, if it's correct that uh, there was a wildlife camera and that cat came back or the bear. So we do have problem cats and problem bears as, as uh, Bev suggested. Uh, I don't recall that number of eight cougars that were dispatched last year, I heard six. Um, but generally when they get a taste of sheep, they're not going back to the woods. It's easy kill. Um, our flock is small, but John <coughs> and uh, Buchanan and uh, Tom Henry do move their animals around. Most people like seeing sheep in the fields, um, but uh, certainly for John, when you lose 41 animals in a year, that's tough. And he supplies employment to four or five people in this municipality. Those folks go, as Robin Tonicliffe said, if, I think in the fall, those folks go, they spend money at Tony's, they have uh, maybe a beer at the, uh, the brewery, maybe they go to a chosen cafe for a nice green cone. So, that economy that circles around uh, the larger farms, and even ours for that matter, we spend $1,500 a year at Willowin just on grain for our sheep and pigs. So this is bigger than most people realize, and certainly the problem cats and bears, they don't go home. They stay, because it's easy prey. And if anybody's seen a, a kill of a sheep, they get eaten alive. They start on the backside where the udders are, and those animals suffer. And I've seen that three times with our, our animals and it's absolutely horrendous. So I really empower you folks to sit down with the CEOs, council, me ask, get the groups together. We have to do this soon. If we're at 40 now, we're gonna be at 100 by the time the summer's out. And that to me is not acceptable. Thank you. Can I ask <coughs> uh, through the chair, Brent? Is there a reason not to ask the conservation officers now to come sooner? Why, why should we hold off for, for a meeting? It takes quite a while to set up a meeting, you know. We could fire off a letter tomorrow. Well, I, and I think Mayor did that, 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 that last year. So, 
from what I understand with the Buchanan's kill at uh, Sea Bluff, that uh, CO was out at Port Renfrew checking fish. So, and they're good guy, good guys and gals, um, and they do their best, but they're just limited on resources. And the thing is too, is that one thing we haven't done for a while is get the dogs out. If we have a problem cat or bear, and I, and I get it, we live in wilderness and there's wolves and cougars and bears, and we all think that we're living in harmony, wait until there's no more sheep. They're gonna be feeding on kids and dogs so my thought would be, okay, let's get them here and get some sort of a understanding. If you're not going to come, then that's fine. But don't leave that, okay, we're going to show up and they show up 12 hours later on a public trail. Don't move the sheep because we want to take measurements. That doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else for public participation? Good evening, uh, Darren Brown, Grace on Road. Uh, today I want to address <coughs> a concerning issue that's plagued our workplaces and public forums, uh, bullying and suppression of voices. Bullying in the workplace is not just a matter of personal conflict, it comes with significant cost. The financial impact on organizations is substantial. The studies have shown workplace bullying increases in absenteeism, higher turnover, and ultimately affects the bottom line. In public forums, it is essential that every voice is heard and respected. So I must address a concerning incident that I re recently witnessed at a public forum. During uh, the public participation period of the PTAS meeting, a participant was unjustly silenced by the chair who yelled, that's a lie, uh, labeling them a liar. Uh, this behavior not only undermines the principles of democracy and free speech, but it also discourages citizens' engagement and participation in the decision-making process. As representatives of our community, it is your duty to ensure that all their voices are heard and respected, regardless of dissenting opinions. You must strive to create an environment where constructive dialogue flourishes and citizens feel empowered to express their concerns and ideas without fear of retribution or intimidation. Councillor Shukin, you failed to address the egregious issue. You didn't hold the chair of Parks and Trails Select Committee accountable for their inappropriate actions. This is not the first time this occurred. When I spoke at a uh, public participation at PTAS meeting in the late summer, I was also shouted down by the same individual and uh, didn't address it at that time, but you were joining via laptop remotely, so it's hard to read the room maybe in that instance. Uh, but I was very surprised that you didn't address it at the March 19th meeting. In fact, then the took steps to uh, try that individual as the new on ingoing chair of the PTAS meeting, um, despite them publicly expressing concerns about their ability to adhere to rules that prohibit bullying. This admission is deeply troubling. It raises serious questions about conduct and leadership within our municipal council and select committees. Bullying in any form has no place in our governance process. I urge each of you to take a stand <coughs> against workplace bullying and the suppression of voices in public forums. Let us work together to cultivate an environment of respect and inclusivity and transparency within our municipality. By doing so, we can rebuild a strong and vibrant community that thrives on the contributions of all its members. Do not allow the specter of bullying to cast a shadow of the work you do on behalf of our community. I urge Councillor Shukin to, as a P-Task liaison, to reflect on your role as the representative of our community and to take decisive action to address this issue. Respectfully request the P-Task Chair acknowledge their mistake and issue a formal apology to Council to our community and our in in those individuals affected by their actions. This gesture of accountability is essential to rebuilding trust and reaffirming commitment to upholding the highest standards of conduct in our municipal affairs. <coughs> to this end, I strongly advocate for the recording of all select committee meetings. Recording meetings will also provide an accurate record of proceedings, but and also serve as a safeguard against inappropriate conduct. Additionally, I urge that meeting minutes be promptly published following each session. The publication of minutes ensures transparency and accountability by allowing citizens to review the discussions and decisions that took place. Let us work towards a future where all members of our community feel valued, heard, and respected. The PTAS <coughs> minutes of March are still not published 21 days later. Uh, my chickens have managed to hatch their eggs in the same duration. 
Thank you for your attention to this important matter. Thank you. Anyone else wish to um, to speak? Oh, Councilor Shuker. Thank you, Mayor Little. I will um, a, discuss this with the chair of PTASC, okay. with the uh, comments that Mr. Brown made, and okay. yeah, yeah, his recollection of the incident. So, thank Great. you. Thank you. Anybody <coughs> else wish to speak at this meeting? Okay, if not, we'll move on to item number four, the adoption of the minutes. If you turn to page three, uh, for our council agenda, we have the council meeting of March 18th. But I have a mover for the adopting these minutes. Moved by Councillor Epps, second by Council Donaldson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Mayor yeah, Little, if I might just comment the, the the top of the um, second page of the minutes. It referenced some comments made to our MLA, um, Minister Mitzi Dean, and just around the City of Colwood model for Community Health Center. The note is about um, the catchment area, including Machosan. That's a decision that, that I believe the Mayor of, of Colwood and others are interested in making. The real issue that I was asking um, the MLA about, though, the question was about whether or not the province would support or whether she would support salary physicians instead of contract physicians in the model. Um, so just I just want to clarify that. It could not reflect so much on this. I don't think we need to correct anything, but just that was the issue. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on to the mayor's report. If I could ask uh, Councillor Epp if you'd like to speak. Um, thank you. Just to announce uh, very great news that the district uh, is the recipient of a BC Active Transportation Network planning grant uh, of $37,500. Um, this is a matching grant and the remaining funds will come out of uh, our one-time budget items. Um, we have engaged urban systems, uh, transportation, uh, engineering and planning group uh, to help us with the plan. Uh, if anybody remembers, they did submit a work plan last fall, which is probably the main reason why we were successful, <coughs> excuse me, in this grant. Um, I just wanted to read what section they had in that, uh, that work plan. It said, it is understood that the district is seeking an active transportation network plan that both articulates a long-term vision for active transportation facilities, but also includes an implementation strategy that guides the district towards short-term implementation of high-priority improvements. Importantly, this is to include putting the district in position to be successful in upcoming grant opportunities such as the BC Active Transportation Infrastructure Grants Program or other appropriate funding source by identifying priority projects that best address the community's active transportation needs and align with the goals outlined within these funding packages and developing the necessary concept design and costing. So <clears throat> we're going to get going on that as soon as possible um, this week, actually, <laughs> to start with, uh, in the hopes that we can have the plan done by the fall intake of the of the active transportation infrastructure grants. Um, this year, the province gave out $24 million in project grants uh, to 11 different recipients. And for example, Souk, well, last year, they applied, uh, they got a Government of Canada infrastructure grant for $1.3 million. <clears throat> this year, they received two 500,000 grants uh, from the, this BC program. So it's, it's an incredible way to fund everything from, from trails to bike lanes to uh, safety things and uh, any bridges, pedestrian bridges, or just all kinds of things that are listed in these, uh, in these grant recipients. So it's, um, it's very exciting to have. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting going up. That's great. Councillor Shukin. I just want to pass on congratulations to Councillor Up. Um, you, yeah, worked long and hard <laughs> on, this, on the grant, and uh, I, I was waiting and waiting and waiting, and I wasn't expecting it to come. So this is happy news. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. And great timing too, because we're 
also looking at the Parks and Trails Master Plan, in, we'll do that in time. So it'll be neat to see how they, the two intersect. And we have spoken with Urban Systems about incorporating our, <coughs> our Trails Master Plan and working with them. Uh, you know, they work a lot on connectivity uh, from, mm -hmm. you know, between trails. A lot of these uh, these projects they're funding now are, are, are connectivity trails. Great. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead, Councillor Donaldson. Yeah. Also, congratulations. And I, I look forward to some of those uh, projects and challenges, and specifically in the core maybe with um, more accessible trails. We're finding that there's different aggregates that we can use and that sort of thing. Yeah. So all the, it's throughout the whole community, clearly. But certainly, we know a few places we can start. Awesome. Yeah, well, they do help with uh, you know with us setting priorities, right? Right. right? So you know we can kind of kind of start picking things off kind of one at a time or a few at a time. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, that's great. Okay, with that happy news, we will move on to reports for action. On page eleven, we have a staff report. Uh, UBCM uh, Regional Community to Community Forum. So this is a memo from uh, Ms. Hansen uh, seeking endorsement from Council for the grant application to UBCM Regional Community to Community Forum Program for 2024-2025. You recall that last year we were the recipient of, I think it was $5,000 or $4,000 for community to community relations with um, with uh, Beecher Bay. And um, this is uh, along the same things uh, for this year. I think it's it's well worth our our efforts and um, the opportunity uh, to help enhance those relations. With that, does anybody want to make a motion? Go ahead, Councillor Donaldson. Yeah, I'd like to motion that Council approve the principal in principle a grant application up to ten thousand dollars for the 2024-25 UBCM regional community to community forum program and authorize the mayor and CAO to execute any agreements <coughs> related to a successful grant application. Second. Okay. This is moved by Councillor Donaldson, seconded by Councillor Sheepkin. Comments? Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, next we have some reports for information. On page uh, 15, we have, uh, first of all, the uh, materials and building inspection permit re revenues and, uh, and uh, the breakdown of the permits issued. With that, I'll take a motion to receive. Motion to receive. Moved by Council Donaldson, seconded by Councilor Shukin. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And we also have, as usual, the District has chosen public communication report statistics <coughs> on page 17. Take a motion to receive. receive. Moved by Council Donaldson, seconded by any of you? Councilor Kemp. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And next we have the monthly bylaw and animal care service report. So we have the uh, statistics on bylaw enforcement and a summary to the end of February, as well as the enforcement actions uh, on page uh, 21. We receive. Moved by Councillor Craig to receive, seconded by Council Donaldson. Comments? Questions? I just have one comment to uh -huh. notice. In February, we had, um, well, in January, there was, there was, I guess, um, I'm not sure if these are hours or incidents, but one deposit of fill in February went right up to eight. So I think it'll be uh, very good when we put into the tax notice some of the rules and regulations and when these timestamps are available so people are more uh, successful in being able to operate and soil for their gardens or whatever. Okay. It's, it's interesting to see that in sort of the off season. So, mm -hmm. yeah, an education mm -hmm. be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So move receipt. Councillor Shukin and Councillor Donaldson. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have some correspondence for action um, on page 23. 
we have a letter from uh, the uh, Agriculture Advisory Select Committee regarding comments about the uh, Chosen Producers Association, the Chosen Farmers Market. And I, I thought it would be a good time to discuss this out in the open, see what we can do about it. Councillor Dawson, uh, since you're the liaison, did you want to start off the discussion? Sure. Um, again, it's, uh, this, this last meeting was, was very full, cool, lots of things to talk about. And it was as we were talking about the um, reviewing the agriculture plan uh, form that we have at the farmers at Bills and Creek Farm, it um, became clear to us over the time of engaging with the public and the farmers and the um, Machosa Producers Association that we would like to meet up with them. I don't know if they actually have always done this or have done this in the past, but um, as they are part of the plan to have a better understanding of um, how the farmer's market operates. Uh, I know when I was involved with the market 29 years ago, um, it was everybody was selling like the same thing. And so the market has grown since then. It's not just uh, cloudy, it's not just people baking bread, it's, it's a lot of different things. And so um, the Ag Committee had also identified there are fewer farmers, but there are farmers that are interested in being involved. Um, one of the things in, in my involvement with the farmers market last year is that I've learned also that some farmers can't make that commitment for the whole six months of um, Sundays, but there is something called a community tent and it's underutilized. So understanding how, more about how that works. So I've spoken with uh, the, the president of the Chosen Producers Association and um, asked if you know it would be an idea for us all to get together and have a better understanding how how that works and also um, how the how we can implement uh, the recommendations that are coming out in, in the agricultural plan and be able to support agriculture on a, on a larger scale, um, including you know roadside stands. Maybe there are people want to come in the odd Sunday to you know sell their seasonal tomatoes because they're not going to grow all year long. That sort of thing. So how is it that we can reach out? and uh, complement each other on the different things that we are doing as agriculture in our, in our community. So this was, um, I think it's again, getting um, the individual at the table to understand what each role of each party is doing and uh, where we can maybe make some improvements. Mm -hmm. Councillor Shuka. Thank you very much, Mayor Little. This, um, when I read the letter and based on some other comments and discussion I've had in uh, last year especially, I, I do feel like this one is ripe for more discussion. Um, the letter states that the purposes of the society are, and then notes, um, to encourage agricultural activity in Machosan. But if folks had a chance to read the lease agreement, I, I think these points are in there as well. So I think it's um, ripe for discussion as to how we can work how local growers can work with produce association to, um, yeah, have a greater presence there. So, mm -hmm. um, both yourself and Councilor Donaldson are well connected. I would be happy to help as much as possible. My connection is um, through the grounds group. I have to acknowledge we haven't met this year, but I'm going to try and set up a meeting before uh, uh, the first farmers market. But um, yeah, it, I, I would almost recommend maybe the two of you with the, the two sides and mm -hmm. you might be in the best position to, to bring something in. Yeah, uh, both of us know uh, both sides uh, quite well. I think that would be good, um, having the president and, or the, the, the chair and the vice chair and the president and the vice president <coughs> of, of the Materials and Producers Association at a meeting together. I mean, the Materials and Producers Association and the Farmers Market have been very successful in, in fundraising, in building the stalls, um, and expanding the, um, uh, uh, the infrastructure on uh, municipal property. And the, the uh, markets are run very well um, every week um, and through to Christmas. Um, so I would like to see them collaborate more so that there's not any misunderstandings. So with that, I, I think that would be a really great idea if we could have a meeting sooner than later because the first market, uh, Councillor Donaldson, is the middle of May. 
Mother's Day. Mother's Day? Okay. So so how about if we do that and, and get everybody to the table and see if we can iron some things out. It may be that uh, some farmers choose to use their own farm stands rather than bringing produce to the farmer's market, but we definitely want to be able to uh, use the farmer's market for supporting agriculture, uh, which they do, but maybe they can do a little better. So let's, let's have those conversations, good idea. So, did you want to make that motion? Um, sure, I would move that Mary Little. Councillor Donaldson, are you okay with the idea? Or? Yes, I'm so okay. okay. I, so I would move that Mary Little and Councillor Donaldson uh, liaise with both the MPA and members of the Ag Committee to discuss the issues um, outlined in um, Ms. Tunnicliffe's letter of March 26th. Okay. This is moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. Discussion? Councillor Gray? Thanks. Um, I'll support the motion. I think Councillor Donaldson, you're the liaison for both the Ag Committee and the MPA? Yes, correct. Great. So I think that, I mean, I was a little bit surprised to get the letter here at the table. It seems to me that the two groups were to talk to each other, much would be resolved. Um, I want to um, just a shout out to the um, the farmers, of course, in our community who are producers, uh, a shout out to the people who've been organizing the producers, uh, the farm markets for a number of years now. I seem to recall the history was that there weren't enough farmers actually <coughs> able to take the time to be at the market all, all the time. And so we did, or they did rather, reach beyond our community and, in fact, you know, arts and crafts and all the other parts of things. I just, my only caution about it would be, I presume at this point, they've probably signed up the people for this year. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of being um, um, being good with everybody. I'm sure they're doing their best with the information they have. But if the groups haven't been talking, then the Producers Association may not know there are other people who would like to, uh, who would like to be um, involved. So um, carrying that conversation seems like a great idea. And then I, I wouldn't mind hearing back later um, how it's going. Um, perhaps uh, Mayor and Councillor Donson can let us know how, how the meetings go. The final point I would make is that the the agriculture letter, uh, Councillor Donson, your letter says that the um, typically there would be a representative from the NPA on the Ag Committee. And now we've just assigned new members to the Ag Committee. Um, is there anybody who's sitting on the Ag Committee currently who might volunteer, uh, or is a part of the MPA who might volunteer to be a liaison, or do we need to appoint a new individual? Well, perhaps that could be part of the discussion as well. So just not to ignore that part of the request. Correct. We have, um, we did have somebody that has left and we've replaced them, and um, yeah, they, they do, they are part of the market. So that, I think, will continue. I think that what the Ag Committee is wanting is, um, are, are we meeting the needs of the uh, MPA and, and vice versa? And now that we have this plan that it will be released soon, um, where, where can we uh, support more Machosa grown farmers, whether they're at their roadside stands, direct farm marketing, like what we do on our farm, or at the market, are we meeting everybody's needs? So I think it's it's coming full circle. We've identified a few things. We've had people say that you know they they want to be involved in the market and get a call back or whatever. So maybe some things were amiss. I don't really know. I'm not involved with uh, intimate workings of of that group. But it was just uh, thought that it would be timely now. We've got the plan and where can we go next. We've identified the season's just about to start. I know I spoke with Jackie and she's got uh, lots of new people coming on board. Um, they also expanded their, their lease area last year, so there are areas that we can ex um, expand more vendors, but there are some infrastructure uh, safety concerns that we have to address before we do that. So uh, that's just another part of the succession plan as uh, of, of our operations. So. Okay. Councillor Ed, then Councillor Gray. Uh, yeah, obviously it is important to support our farmers, but I also, uh, I think it's uh, you know it's nice to have a diversity in the markets so that when people come you know it's, you can kind of do do a bit more shopping um, than just for for the farm produce um, and we do have in our strategic plan uh, we do say that we want to support small business 
I think that's also is, you know, along if uh, two groups you know, can kind of come to to a meet halfway somewhere that can kind of satisfy all the needs would be uh, would be nice. Good point. Councillor Gray. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Okay, so with that we have a motion on the table. Um, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. We have no bylaws and no other business, but we do have um, 20 minutes uh, for question periods. If anybody, oh yeah, and uh, sorry about that. And we do have correspondence for information number 11. We've got the Chosen Producers Association um, license of occupation, as well as um, correspondence received from the bacon regarding the uh, uh, letter from Ms. Tom Cliff. Okay. Okay, so with that, uh, questions. Does anybody in the audience have any questions? Hearing crickets, I say that we move on to a motion for adjournment. Moved by Councillor Donaldson, second by Councillor Epp. All in favor? Opposed, period. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening.